So final trend uh, I wanted to kind of uh, touch is design systems. Design in general is really important currency in web for building trust. So in a way, if something is designed well, it's really easy for people to start trusting that because there is quite few different things how you can communicate this trust in online environment. And uh, there is an old study measuring the S&P 500 companies where they classified these companies in design-centric and non-design-centric companies. And they saw that the ones who really understood and put the design in the center, they were outperforming the competition by a lot. But that's quite abstract. Let's take a more concrete example for banking in this specific case for consumer oriented banking it was interesting to see that in that category the banks were chosen by the consumers mostly by their online experience so in a way the product is pretty much the same from the consumer point of view and where the banks could differentiate is what type of design they could have and what type of experience they could have design for their online banking makes sense but the reason why not everybody is uh, focusing enough on design is that it's actually quite hard to build great experiences. First of uh, kind of making a, some experience consistent across all the parts of the application is hard. And uh, people have been trained by consumer oriented applications that the expectation for the experience should be really fine grained. So consumer companies like Facebook, they have really put a lot of effort in uh, fine tuning every part of the experience. And it's hard for a business application to put as much attention to every part of the experience as, as those consumer companies have been putting to. And when you do put then the cost of uh, designing that experience and iterating the experience, that starts to be quite prohibitive. And even if you would have that uh, budget to really put enough effort into iterating the design, quite often you find out that uh, there are gaps where your development team will have to kind of uh, jump on the seat of the designer and developers are quite rarely good designers. So you might end up having part of the application feel like it's designed by the developers. And that really is a good thing. So there is a quite universal solution for this. It's called design systems. To define what is the design system, it's a single source of truth that standardizes uh, visual style, UI components, and how you combine those in a way that the designers and developers could collaborate together to create good user experiences for most common use cases. So this library of uh, UI components and how you use those to build for those use cases, that library itself is a super powerful tool because then every developer and designer in the organization, they, they can start taking those blocks from that uh, design system like Legos and build their user experience out of those Legos in a way that they're uniform and behave in the same way across all of the application. In the beginning, some years back, five to 10 years back, this was only done by big companies. Some of the leaders included Apple and IBM that defined their design systems in a way that allowed them to build really consistent user experience across their companies. But uh, later on, more and more and smaller and smaller companies started joining in this because design systems just make sense. Uh, today, if you Google for a design system and the name of your favorite unicorn size company, you probably find their design system out in the open. You can see and try it out. But because this is such a powerful idea, I bet that every company over the time will have their own design system that defines what's the feel, how their user experience works in their applications and all across their applications. And in order that to happen, the cost must go down drastically over the time. And the cost is going down basically by more and more reusable pieces being available for people who built those design systems. So let's take an example. This is a GitHub design system. Typically, you see like CSS frameworks, maybe a design tool library in there for design UX, icons, and so forth. But in the core of a design system, typically there is a set of UI components. And for web apps, there are basically two ways of building those UI components, React and Web Components. Those two ways have been a dominating way for building design systems for quite a while. 
And it's interesting to see how this develops because uh, Web Components now is a standard that can be used across all the frameworks, while as React is for one framework, but it's super popular. So if we kind of dive into this system, typically there are all kinds of documentation. How do you build the designs? How you use the colors? You can test each of the UI components in there. See how these are used in your code. See icons and so forth. So this uh, type of uh, guidelines it is the design system. And design system is kind of uh, a documentation and a book that describe how user experiences are built. So here's another example: material design. This is by Google. It became super popular. It was one of the first design systems that was customizable for end applications. So you could take material design and customize at least the colors and some of the properties for your application. And again, in the center of everything is components. And in here, you can try these components out, see code examples for these. But also because these are customizable design system, there is tools like uh, how to build color systems for your application. So design system, they don't have to have exactly the same parts, but typically they revolve around the same themes. Here is another great one by Microsoft called Fluent. In there, again, there is a long list of components, in this case, for three different platforms, web, iOS, and Android. Different style guides, how you are expected to set different style properties in, in there. Here's another example by General Electric. So this was one of the first web component-based design systems. And we're kind of proud to say that Vardin was uh, helping General Electric for, for building this. Th this has quite extensive set of components and more kind of a deeply functional component than many other design systems of the date. But also it had like this way to edit different properties of those components. So you could test how those components worked and also test how you could uh, apply different theming for, for those components. So in the foundation of a design system, I believe that the web components are the future. This is a standard. And by being a standard, you kind of guarantee that it's there for a long run. It's there regardless of frameworks, regardless of products around it. So everybody can share the same foundation. Today, web components, they work with uh, all the common web browsers and most of the frameworks. And uh, in found the kind of fundamental idea is there that let's encapsulate a UI component in a custom element. So basically a tag on the web page and what makes a tag a custom element is that you have this dash character in, in the middle somewhere. If you look at how this is supported by different the browsers right now, uh, the custom elements are basically supported by everything but IE11. And uh, IE11, that's a dead browser already, but it's still fairly common in some industries. So for that, you can patch IE11 by adding support in there for web components as, as well but it kind of slows that down. Everything but IE11 pretty much works and has a built-in support. Uh, another part of the standard is HTML templates. Same thing over there, 95% of the browsers are supported and say for the Shadow DOM. So pretty much uh, web and the world is ready for web components. And with this in mind, one of the first big examples from a couple of years back that implemented UI in web components is YouTube. So that has been around for a long time. And the cool thing with the web components is that you can actually, as with any other web tool, you can take a peek under the hood. So you can go to YouTube and open up a Chrome inspector. You can actually see the web components in there. So just in the Chrome inspector, if you see dash in the name of a uh, element that's an uh, indication that's a web component. Another cool application uh, was built by Apple. Apple Music is built on top of web components. So this is tech that drives their music business. Also, for Varin, any application since Varin 10 that has been built with Varin is actually built with web components. So everything in Varin nowadays is a web component. And we have tons of these. So all the kind of basic uh, use cases for a data-centric application is covered by the Vardis Web Component Library. So you can use any of these to build your applications or form your own web component-based design system.
So what we are doing next on top of what we have already, so today we have a conference set of components, we have a customizable theme called Lumo, and we also have a bunch of services that help customers build their own design systems. We build new components for them, we help them build a, a full design system. What we are doing next is building a design system viewer that helps you to add more documentation than just the components and styles in your design system. And also build a design system in a such way that it's easy to update that over the time with new components. When Vanin comes up with the new components, you can then adopt those in, in your design system.